This is where Apocalypse was an absolute MVP. And Hey, welcome back to the channel. All right, it's finally time to go over the last two of the four main champions I used in the gauntlet. These two did not take nearly as many fights for me. One, I think there's a good reason for it. The other one was just me being stubborn and really wanting to use Professor X because he's so awesome. The two, obviously it's clear by the thumbnail and the title, I hope uh, it's gonna be Apocalypse and Cable. I'm gonna show um, here this first fight with Apocalypse. We'll talk about them as we get into them and I will speed one up because it takes quite a while. So we will fast forward through that, but I do wanna talk about them and then we'll show the other three with Cable. And I'll talk a little bit about why I think if I could do this all over again, I probably wouldn't bring Cable as much as I love him and I do love him. Um, let's get into this. Okay, so this first fight is gonna be this fight against Apocalypse, we're, uh, I'm sorry, with Apocalypse, we're going up against Nightcrawler. And here's something that I've been trying to mention in every single one of my videos on the gauntlet, uh, because I do think it's very important people see it, because I continue to get questions about Falcon. There are some fights he can work for, but they're gonna be few and far between, and I think he's often gonna be very difficult for him. Doesn't mean it can't be done. And the reason is, is so many of them have some sort of ability, accuracy, immunity, or something like that. And remember, that's how he works. That's how he's shutting these things down. So for me, a champion like Professor X or Apocalypse, if you can build up his evade counter, is just better because they just don't let the defender evade. It's not that they prevent the evade from reducing ability accuracy. Let's check this out so you know uh, what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar, I did do a full breakdown with, it is now the spreadsheet is up to eight different, I think it's 10 actually teams from all from some really excellent masters tier uh, level players. And um, Apocalypse was a very common option. In fact, I believe DLL used him for the vast majority of his fights. Now, I know it seems like I'm going in and just attacking like a crazy person, and I kind of was, I kind of was. You see, and this is one, the one negative to Apocalypse's evade counter, is that you need the opponent to evade and you get those charges, you see it in the upper right hand corner, it's actually under uh, Nightcrawler. It's that passive evade, right? It's a little red, uh, a white icon in the red circle. And we now are like 80% chance to prevent evade or something like that. Um, we wanna get to 100, but the problem is, is that I need him evade to get to 90 and 100. So honestly, I was just playing like a crazy person at this point. I was very comfortable just using a revive and it was kind of an efficient play for me wanting to get uh, Apocalypse's evade, <laughs> evade counter up high. That right about here, if I remember correctly, it was somewhere in, within this fight, I realized, I think I can actually just solo this fight. I should stop playing like a crazy person. I'm gonna start ending combos and lights. Uh, I'm gonna obviously continue to play Apocalypse as best I can, meaning I'm going to keep his debuffs up. Uh, and then I'm gonna get to the SP3. Let's make them permanent. And then this is also gonna land the concussion, which would normally be really helpful, but remember, this has that force of will node, so I can't lower Nightcrawler's uh, ability accuracy, right? That's that. So don't think that that's gonna help you out either. You really need to get these evade charges going. 80% or 80 is pretty darn good. Uh, so I'm just gonna continue this on. I'm gonna get to his SP2. For those of you who are not familiar, you're not familiar. Uh, I did use a 30% champion boost throughout this whole run. I also used a 200% mutant boost. Uh, all right, so just baiting that SP2. We got another evade there, so now we're at the 90. There's just one more if we can get it. Uh, and then I know that opponents just will not be evading. You're seeing how often the evades are failing anyways, and Apocalypse's specials are doing amazing damage. He was so good. Again, if I, could, if I were to do this run over, I believe I would use him more. I would not actually bring in Cable. So many people were able to ramp up their APOC through good play uh, and get him going. Did not need him at the four evade charges. All right, so I think this is gonna be it. Yeah, so Nightcrawler down, like you saw, I played like an absolute insane person who had no fear of an evade against Nightcrawler, which is typically not a good idea. It still was not a good idea, but I was able to survive it. Apocalypse is huge and massive, and so he took the beating. Now I have him pretty much charged up as an evade counter and he was ready to go. He was incredible, he was awesome. Now here is, I think for me, this is where Apocalypse was an absolute MVP and anyone who goes into this content, uh, yes, you can do this with Archangel. 
yes, I believe you can do this with Human Torch. We've seen, um, ch you know, check this, the spreadsheet. There are other options, but for me, for me personally, by far the best option was Apocalypse. And I'm gonna show you why, right? First of all, there's this hard knock life node. And uh, that's a real problem. It was difficult for me to, to deal with that, particularly with Sasquatch going into the Wrath of Tanarak and things like that. I did not move remove dexterity, so the power snack was coming into. And then this life cycle. So they are immune from the damaging debuff, so they're not taking damage. And you need to cancel out his heal. Remember, Sasquatch, if you can start to, uh, I believe it is reverse his heal, he actually stops trying to heal, heal. It is in his kit. It's part of how you can fight him. So you want to have maxed out despair. You want to max that out. And then the fight with Apocalypse is, it's very patient. You want to get all the debuffs on him, get to your SP3 to make them permanent, right? You're your SP1, your SP2, you're now going to have those debuffs on them. They're not going to be causing damage, but they're there. Then you're going to throw your SP3, making them permanent, and then just continue to keep up the bleeds as best you can while dealing with Wrath of Tanarak. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at it. We'll watch the setup of it. I think this fight's going to take me about six or seven minutes. Even with, you see, I went in with uh, Archangel and got, you know, uh, what's that, 23% down. Didn't really like it. I have a rank three Archangel. I just didn't like dealing with the disorient and all that. It just, I don't know. You can do it. People have done it. I just didn't like it. So here we go. We throw the SP1. We now have the two debuffs on him. We're doing some decent damage here. I'm still going to be, of course, refreshing uh, the debuffs as best I can with my heavy. Alt that will also applying the bleed so the debuffs are on him they're doing some work let's see how it deals with his healing um if and when that happens and i should just be working my way to the sp2 and i should be throwing it there we go so now i've got the four debuffs on and now i want to just get to my sp3 as reasonably quickly as possible uh, while also dealing with this wrath of tanarak here you see it I do know the spacing fairly well. I've fought in Sasquatch quite a bit, mainly on uh, an encroaching stun node there in war. So that was really helpful. Uh, you know, my experience didn't help me too much right there, as you can see. But again, we talked about Apocalypse. He's tanky. He's a big boy. It's a rank three. I'm using a 30% champion boost. So I don't really have concern from taking a few hits. And, uh, and also I was testing this, you know, I was warned repeatedly of how badly this fight can go for a person. You know, I just am very comfortable with it. So now we've thrown, or we, I've thrown my SP3, we, me and Apocalypse together decided to throw our SP3. Uh, and so now those debuffs will be permanent. So now for me, this is purely going to be about refreshing the heavy, uh, refreshing the bleeds, I'm sorry, getting those up there if I can, getting all the way up to four bleeds dealing with Wrath of Tanarak as best as I can. You know, it's a bit of a pain in the butt, uh, but you can get it done. It's not It's not terrible once you get used to it. Do your duels, dual Sasquatch. It'd be really helpful to you to uh, kind of figure out how to fight him a little bit better before you go in. As you can see, even I'm gonna make some mistakes and we're still gonna get him down. Uh, all right, so I should be throwing my SV2. And this is probably about where we're gonna start. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because, you know, we just should. Um, and I think the, the finish is really important. And I'll, t I'll talk about that when we get to the other side. All right, so we're coming, ba uh, coming back in. We wanna talk about this. You see that he is healing uh, because I only have the four debuffs up. I don't have any of my bleeds or anything like that. Uh, as soon as I get those on, that heal should be canceled out. I had to wait out that Wrath of Tanarak. Okay, the heal just kind of went off on its own. That's fine, I've got the bleeds up. So now I'm just really concentrating on keeping the bleeds up. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, and I, I did see this before uh, I started commenting on it. Um, yeah, he get the, he got a little bit stingy. You see, we were able to cancel off the bleed with the parry there. So I know that everything's going fine. Now my strategy was, because my Apocalypse has four genetic code, my strategy had been to uh, deplete uh, Sasquatch's power, to get him to throw a special, get him under a bar of power, then knock him down and then use my four genetic code, that stun that can happen when you hit into block, to just finish him off. I thought I'd be able to do it that way. You see, I'm gonna make, uh, well, I don't know if it's technically a mistake, but it's coming up right here, where I'm actually going to use that stun. But then an opportunity presents itself to try to finish him off, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and use it. So you'll see that. But I do think that that would have been a good strategy 
as far as using that stun because it's a, it's a free stun it's a free ability to just get in there and do some damage when you really need to to finish him off but here we go and you can see what happened is is i had him over two bars of power and now i'm going to start kind of playing this baiting game he he got me there but i was hoping for him to throw a special because remember i wanted to deplete his power and uh let's see how this works out i remember getting a little nervous here i had him so close this is where it can kind of start to go wrong uh especially you know if he starts healing, if he has the ability or reason to start healing, I don't have those bleeds on him. So I do need to refresh those too. So he finally throws that special. I'm able to counter it with uh, my heavy. And then the Wrath of Tanarak actually uh, triggers there too. You see, I uh, I have a whiff. Fortunately, I had kept my SV3. I do think that's a, a smart thing to do when you fight Sasquatch, when he has that Wrath, because you can get you can get countered or uh, pinned against the wall there. Having your SV3 to get you out is a really nice thing. And then I think we're going to finish off this Wrath at Tanarak here. I was like, okay, this isn't, I didn't have my moment. That's fine. Don't force this. Stay calm. And uh, let's see here. I, I do think I need to end up baiting this next SP2 one more time. This feels like a repeat of the last SP2. I even got clipped. Here we go. All right. We've got our ending now. So I've got the four bleeds up. It's important. I want as many debuffs as possible. I used the stun there. Not sure that was a great idea, but you're gonna see how well this works out, especially with the power back. I did get a little bit of power back, which was nice. Refresh the bleeds, and then now throw the SP1 into his block. Take advantage of that window to actually in, uh, finish him off. Got him down. It's a long fight, as you saw. There was a couple opportunities to have finished him off, but I, with the tankiness of Apocalypse, his ability to put on all of those debuffs, and then him being able to go disorient immune. To me, that was a massive, massive deal. It was just one less thing I needed to think about it in a fight that I'm aware really, truly roadblocked some excellent players. This, that's how difficult this fight can be, is it, it roadblocks some other extremely good players. So go in prepared, know how you're going to take it, and then take your time. Take your time. Uh, and you can definitely get it done. If you have any questions about it, hit me up uh, in the comment section or uh, or join the Discord server. There's been people talking about it at length. And then definitely uh, check out, like I said, the full review video with the spreadsheet because you're gonna see all kinds of other options and ways that people took this. We've actually updated it now uh, with some Aegon runs too, which is really nice. All right, now let's get into Cable. I love Cable. I love using Cable. Uh, one of my favorite champions in the game, of course, with his buddy Apocalypse. Um, and he did some nice things. He did some nice things in this. I'm gonna show the Terax fight. Uh, it was by far the best fight I saw of, by my buddy Strands. He's a, a very good player, uh, a great player actually. And uh, I was really happy he provided it. This void was a bit of an issue for me. If you've seen my other videos, I went in with Professor X. I took him to rank three literally minutes before I went into uh, the gauntlet. I had watched MSD's video and I was like, I can do this. And I didn't do bad. I just did not do anywhere close to as well as MSD did. So I did not, um, I didn't want to bring him in. I was just going to throw cable at him, see how it could go. And then, so if you take a look at this, right? Uh, the power shield is there, which is going to be a little bit of an issue. But the biggest issue for me was the long distance relationship. And that was a problem for me as far as the damage I was taking because of the weakness debuff by being close to Void and having that pan out really well with Professor X. Obviously with Power Shield, if you can get to your SP3, or maybe if I should have just gone to the SP2, I don't know. Um, but that was a bit of a problem for me and I was I, I had died and I just, I'd wanted to throw Cable at him so I could kind of test out the fight. And then you're gonna see how well this works out with Cable. The reason being, Cable does so much of his damage with the Heavy. Uh, you see that this Void had about 577,000 health, right? So this isn't a solo. But I think if you see it, you look, you're like, oh, Cable can do this. Uh, so because I am staying away so frequently, you see I'm backing up like a crazy person, but because I'm able to do that, just go in and do these parries, I'm not close to him. I'm not close to him, so I don't have to worry about the weakness nearly as frequently. I can do the parry, and then as you saw there, I did do a five-hit combo just to get Void's debuff off of me. It really wasn't bad. Look at how well this is going to go. Uh, if you're not familiar with Cable's SP2, it actually isn't bad too. That's a 90% concussion. Uh, it does land and incinerate, which obviously is not very helpful versus Void, but things are going well. You see, uh, that is by far the most damage I'm gonna take. And that's from a missed 
uh, heavy off of the SP2. Again, I was just testing this stuff out. This was really like, hey, let's see if this works fight for me with Cable. That's kind of how, that was Cable's role for me in uh, Gauntlet. And he did a really nice job with it. So I'm backing up again to get that weakness off of me. Now I do need to, uh, well, he intercepted there to get uh, over the 10 hit combo. This wasn't bad. Again, uh, keep in mind, we've done about 50% of the health that Void had. Uh, he had about 70% if I remember correctly. We've got him all the way down to 33%. If I don't take that combo to the face, I'm still around 70% my health, 70% uh, health myself. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, and and this was good. This was really good. This worked out. Cable did his job. He wasn't just parry heavy over and over. Of course, it's nice when you can do that and get that degen going like crazy. Uh, but you see the damage. You see the damage was going. And the really crazy part is this was actually a bubble shield note. So, um, you know, it's not typically something that you think of for Cable because he's doing the very heavy. It's just, that's how immense his uh, degen damage is. And then, oh, you know, Void, I told him not to throw his SP3. Obviously, I just got a little too aggressive. You <laughs> don't recommend doing that, but we got him down. So Cable can work for that. I wanted to show it because a lot of people have asked me about Cable and how he did in here. Okay, in this fight, I actually cannot explain this fight. Uh, I do not understand what happens here. If you do, let me know, uh, because you're gonna see how this works out. So there's polka dot power, which obviously I'll be getting power because I'll be uh, applying that debuff. This is where I don't understand what happened, is the sharpened claws. Uh, let's go and take a look. So I, the, the Killmonger is supposed to slash the blocks and flip five bleeds, uh, five stacks of bleeds. Each bleed does 10% of attack over three seconds. To me, uh, that seems like a decent amount, but, but watch what happens here. Watch this. Uh, I was getting prepared to kind of, again, Cable was like my, I'm a little bit tired, I'm a little bit frustrated. Again, I realized Killmonger starting about 50% health. The point of this wasn't to show you these solos, just to kind of show you like how this went. I got a lot of questions on Cable. Look how much, how little bleed, I understand there because I have the synergy with Professor X, but watch how little damage it does uh, once that's down. I just don't fully understand. There's probably something about it. I'm sure a bunch of you will probably hopefully get like 10 comments saying like, dude, here's what happened. Uh, but I really want to know. Uh, I'm, I'm still at 100% health. That The Professor X synergy, that um, that damage mitigation shield, it will come down. But you see how much damage we're doing to, K uh, to Killmonger in the meantime, right? This is going exceptionally well. Um, okay, so now that's off and look at this. I don't know if this is a bug, in which case, uh, I guess we should report it to Kabam, but just very little damage is, is being done to Cable. So this just became kind of a, a bait. Killmonger's heavy, uh, you know, respond to um, respond to it as best I can with uh, heavies and stuff like that, get that damage going. You see how much damage we're doing to Killmonger here. Um, and the bleeds into the block are, are doing very, very little. Maybe that's how little damage they're supposed to do. I would have thought they were supposed to do a lot more. Cable owned that. Clearly could have uh, clearly could have soloed the whole thing. And then this fight's from my buddy Strands. This is the one that a lot of folks want to see. I went back and watched my video because I, I, I was like, I really hope I did a good job of, of making it clear. Cable was not a great option for this fight. He just was an option, right? Uh, I happened to bring him in because I wanted Apocalypse ranked up. Uh, immediately with this four genetic code. So I did bring Cable in for this. I got it done in, I believe, two to three revives. I think it was two, because, uh, you know, you revive twice, which means three full attempts. And then even went back in afterwards, because so many people asked about this fight, because I know it's a trouble fight for folks. Uh, I did it with Suis uh, with uh, the Recoil Masters. I did it without, I did it, I, I didn't make him a horseman, because I didn't do that in my initial run. Uh, I tried everything and I could not get as good of a fight as my buddy Strands did. You're going to see this right here. Uh, as you see, he's already taken a little bit off of Terax, uh, but I think the important thing to keep in mind is where Terax starts to where Terax ends. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, let's jump into this. Keep in mind, I think Strands played excellently. I think this is like about as good as one could do. Um, the key that he's going on to do, and this is what makes this so difficult, is he wants to get Terax in the corner and create enough distance so that Strands is not taking damage from the rock field 
but also then keep him there. Cable is not bad at this for those who've done a fight like this against Terax because of the reach on Cable's heavy. The one thing that we talked about was maybe if he had thrown his SP2 and gotten the concussion up, that could have maybe prevented some of the damage, maybe the Rockfield wouldn't have triggered. Really weren't sure, we tried doing variations of that. And again, this was as good as it got. Strands is doing a great job of keeping Terax pinned in the corner. The real negative is that what's happening is that Terax's power is staying relatively high and Cable's degen is calculated based on how much power the defender has or the opponent has when the degen is landed. This is kind of a nice situation for Strands there. Uh, in that he's got no rock field that he has to deal with, but then he's gonna have to start the series over and over. Again, I know I've already said it, but I, I just don't think Cable is an A option. I really did grade this as a C. I think this is if you just want to do like an efficient, you know you're gonna use some uh, revives and you really wanna bring in Cable for APOC or something like that. I think this is the way to go. Uh, I believe Strands is going to take off about 60% of the health from Terax, so if you're able to duplicate this, that's only one revive. That actually is not bad. I mean, if you make a mistake with Namor or Quake or something like that, you're probably spending a revive anyway. The benefit is this fight is early on in the gauntlet, so if you do that and you wanted to get the solo, you're probably just backing right out. I don't know. Strands played excellently. He really did an excellent job. Um, you can see he got in a, a rhythm a little bit there, so maybe Strands could have gotten the solo, but at some point, I think, again, you got to factor in time versus using a revive. And so thank you, Strands, so much for uh, letting us see this. This was the best run by far that I have seen, and I was definitely not able to do better to spend, despite spending quite a bit of time uh, and energy on it. So, uh, and then look at these. I want you to see these final stats here. Strands never even got hit. Landed 113 of them, never got hit, and died. Anyways, thank you so much, Strands, and thank you everyone for checking in. Is I gave him a C. I gave him a C for this fight. I I, I think he's, you know, if you're just gonna accept, if you really want to bring Cable, uh, probably it's because you want a pop up starting off with four genetic code. Then Cable can do this. Expect to probably spend two to three revives though. And so you're just, this is your efficiency. This is what you're doing. Um, you're just gonna go in, you know you're gonna use items on this because you're gonna use cable to get this fight down. But if that's not the tactic that you wanna use, and I am not advising that. I think if you're going in with Apocalypse, you're probably gonna be able to charge him up on his own. Um, take a look at DLL's run and take a look and listen to DLL's full breakdown on this. He did an excellent breakdown on the whole gauntlet. So check that out too. It's, it's definitely linked in the spreadsheet and in the description of the uh, build your team video that I did. Also, we've seen that I believe Clairvoyant can do this fight very well. And then of course, Quake can, and then absolutely Namor could. And uh, Work in Progress, who's also on the spreadsheet, used Namor for a couple other fights. So it's not like you're just bringing Namor in for this one. Uh, keep that stuff in mind. So thank you everyone who has watched all of these. This will probably be my, at least for now, for the time being, this will be my last video on the gauntlet. I think it was a tremendous piece of content. I had an absolute blast with it. I know there's a little bit of like, ah, Quake's just gonna be able to do it and Ghost too. But you know what? They're great champions. And I, I would prefer to bam, design uh, really fun content. And if some people can get through it with Quake and Ghost because they're that good with them, then more power to them. And it's fun content for the rest of us who just aren't that good with it or don't have them. This was, a tr this was a blast. This was an absolute blast. I hope we see more things like this as time comes on. I know it's not something they can do monthly. There's just no way. But if this could be something that we get two or three times a year, that would be fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for watching all the kind words, the comments, the fun interactions have been incredibly fun for me. I've appreciated the heck out of it and I appreciate the heck out of you all who have watched these things. Uh, hit me up in the comments, Discord, show up to the streams, and just ask these questions. So many smart people uh, surrounding in our community and surrounding this channel. We'll get the questions answered or we'll figure it out together. Again, thank you so much for watching. Take care. I hope you either learned something, were entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.